Hey guys, welcome back. This is gonna be a project video. We've already done a video like this and it's gonna be building a rope bag, but we didn't have a pattern pack associated with that. And if you follow me on Instagram, you may have noticed that we, uh, we kind of teased out a, a couple weeks ago that we have developed a pattern pack finally for the rope bag. They're gonna be sold um, on an individual pattern basis. So there'll be pattern number one will be the first one that we have out. That'll be this floral pattern right here minus this brand. It won't have this brand in there, but it is this floral pattern as well as the back pattern on there. Um, these rope bags are probably the biggest thing that you'll ever design and tool. And so there's a lot of time associated with laying out a pattern on this big of a space. And so um, it's gonna be limited on how many patterns we can get into each pack so that they're not just super big on the printed packs. And uh, and so what we did, ended up decided to do is we're just gonna do the first one will be pattern number one. All the new ones that come out after that over time will be the exact same pattern pack as far as the cut patterns for the gusset, the straps, the little D hangers, those kind of things that we're gonna show you in this video. But the pattern, the floral pattern will change from pattern number one, pattern number two will be different, pattern number three will be different. And we'll just go through that over the coming months and years to create a whole collection of different rope bag pattern packs. But in this video here, like I said, we've already done a video building a rope bag, but in there I did a much more complicated gusset system in there. In this rope bag, I'm gonna do what I normally do. In that video, if you go back and watch it, you'll hear me say that the only reason I did them the way I did them in that video was because the gusset material was not long enough to go all the way around the rope bag and so we had to seam those about right here and so on this one I've got material that's plenty long to go all the way around so it'll go in a lot a little easier but with both of those videos you have two different options um, if you prefer the older way we did the gusset and maybe you've made a couple of those since then and you would you like the way that gusset looks um, then then you can certainly use that on this everything else is going to be the same but so what we've done is we've already started and this video might be a little bit different than our other ones um, I've already tooled this piece. I've already done my dyed background on this piece and we've already um, Went ahead and slicked the edges. We went ahead and slicked the edges all the way around I did go ahead and dye them if you would prefer to wait to dye them until the bag is completely put together um, You certainly can as you'll see later in the video when we put the gusset in here and we get it all trimmed I will go back with more dye and catch that uh, chapman leather material and, and get that edge nice and dyed as well. But I like to go ahead and get all my dye work done. It's just a lot easier on something this big when you're working with dye to be a little bit more careful and be, get a nice clean edge on the tooled face of the rope bag. And so that's the way I do it. Um, and then as far as our D hangers, um, we have the little pattern right here. Um, this will be in the pattern pack for my style of D hanger. It fits right here in an opening in the tooling. You just cut out at a nine, 10 ounce leather. I'm gonna cut this out. And then, as you can see, we, we cut those out, we skive them down. We go ahead and, and skive those out just a little bit, fold them over, let them dry, and then we'll go ahead and glue them together with the D in there, and then edge them and slick them and dye them. Then they're ready to be installed on the bag. Once we install them on the bag, I go ahead and make a hole where the rivet's gonna go, and then I line that up on the bag, get them, get them right in position, and then go ahead and, and uh, glue those in place. I'll sew them first and then put the rivet in. I find that to be a little bit easier easier but once those are sewn on now we've got the front panel and the back panel completely assembled and ready to have the gussets put in this is going to be much easier to put your straps on once the bag is completely done we'll just have to make our straps and then put our straps uh, with rivets on on the uh, on the d's and the bag will be done now there is three pieces this bag is a double compartment so you've got your front panel we've got a middle panel and then we've got the back panel. That's gonna create two compartments of this bag. If you wanna build just a single compartment bag, you can simply just take that panel out and do a wider gusset than what we have in the pattern pack. Um, we'll put some notes in there on how wide that, that gusset should be if you're going to do it single compartment. Um, I, I think the double compartment is better. I almost exclusively do two compartment rope bags. That way a guy can keep his old ropes or practice ropes and then some new ropes in another deal and he's got them kind of separated. But I think the double compartment stands up better. I think it's got a lot more integrity as far as the bag goes and its strength. And so that's just why I do them that way. I just think 
think they're they're a little bit nicer of a bag um, and, and they stand up a little bit easier. But we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna get the gussets fit to one one of these panels. All three of these panels are the exact same size, so you can just grab one. I usually grab the face, the face piece, and we'll figure out how long the gusset needs to be. So let's get started. All right, so I've got some chap leather here that we're gonna make our gussets out of. I got this from Lewis uh, Robert at Lewis Leather Sales, and it's just a really good chap leather. It's uh, four to six ounce, something like that. It's an old tan. It glues up pretty good, and um, I just think it's real pretty. And so that's what we're gonna use on this. And so the first thing we're gonna do is, I like to start with a full side if I can, because I, you're gonna need that length to make it all the way across the rope bag. And so we'll move this other side over here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of lay this out. And then I'm gonna grab a panel. Like I said, I grab a front or back panel, doesn't matter, they're pretty much all the same. So just grab one of them. And what we're gonna do is just kind of take this guy and just kind of roll it down. And as you can see, we're gonna need pretty much the whole length of the side. And so that's kind of one of the issues when you do this. And that's why in the older video, we did it in, in uh, four, uh, two pieces. Each gusset was in two pieces. And that was because I didn't have a full side length. And so what I do to do that is just start in the middle on the bottom, just to get an idea, make sure your side's long enough. Just start in the middle right there of uh, hanging, hanging half of it off of the end and then roll till you get back to that point on the other side. So we'll just roll down here and I've got I've got a good foot and a half left after that. So I know this side is long enough. So all I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna straight edge this side. So we've got a nice squared edge. And then we'll measure off the width of the gussets that we're gonna cut. And I'm gonna cut two of those. And those are gonna make our gussets for both compartments. So I'll do that right now. I'm just gonna straight edge this. Um, I've got just a little jag hanging off right there. Now, when you straight edge, always kind of sight down your straight edge along your side. Watch for any tanner clips. Sometimes your tanneries will, uh, on, on chap leather and, and veg as well, there may be some clip marks along the edge. And be sure you cut those off if you can, and that way they're not in our gusset. And I always try to sight down my side of leather so that I'm not gonna waste too much because sometimes your side, especially around the neck, it'll drop there at the shoulder and then kind of come back up. And so I want to sight down, be sure we're preserving the, the butt to the middle mostly. And if we got to get a little bit of that neck wasted, that's not a huge deal. We'll just run a line here, move it down and run another line. And then we're ready to cut this. And so I am just going to cut this with a razor blade. I find a razor blade is a little bit easier on chap leather. It's a little soft. If you're trying to use a round knife or a head knife, at least mine, my, mine isn't very good. And so um, on softer leather, you get a little bit more of a wobble in there. So I find a razor blade, box cut or something like that is a lot easier to straight edge these, these sides. So I'm gonna grab a new blade and then we'll cut this. Well, take your time, be sure you're staying on the line and you can cut this nice and straight. Now real quick, as you can see, we've got this much left. This is kind of a scrap piece. I save these occasionally. I mean, you can get a watch band out of that. You can get, you know, a liner for a head stall out of some of this, maybe some short cheek liner, something like that. So I always just throw this in a box. Half the time they never get used, but I have them in case I need them. So pitch that somewhere. Okay guys, so we've got the chap leather straight edged here. I've got a nice little straight edge. Um, had to take off yesterday and uh, take care of some stuff. So we're back in the shop this morning and I'm gonna go ahead and cut the two gussets. Since we're doing a two compartment, we're gonna need two separate gussets. Now I'm gonna cut these uh, you can cut them anywhere from five to six inches wide on a double compartment. Um, I would try to keep, if you're doing it a single compartment, I'll put notes in the pattern pack on this, but you probably want to keep that whole width somewhere under seven, eight inches, somewhere like that. You don't want that, that rope bag to be too terribly wide. Um, I've seen them really, really wide and the front and back panels don't 
stay lined up very well. So you need to put some reinforcement in there if you go wider. But on a double compartment, which is what we're building in this video, I'm gonna do these gussets. I'm gonna cut them maybe just a hair over five inches, but I'll have all these measurements in the pattern pack as far as the uh, overall length. Remember, we're just gonna cut them the width we need them, side length, and then we will fit those onto the panels and get a precise fit and mark on how we're gonna join those up. You need to do the same if you're building this using our pattern pack, is just be sure that you have, I'll have an overall measurement, but that's not the measurement that's gonna, it's finally gonna be. You need to fit those like we're gonna do in this video. So I'm gonna cut these out. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go along here. We've got a nice clean straight edge along here. And I'm just going to set my marks here. off on that one and I'm going to set a series of marks down this side of leather the reason I'm doing that is because it's leather it's not plywood it's not a it's not a board it's it's not plywood it's not it's not lumber or steel where the edge is going to stay true that side of leather can kind of move around a little bit so I want a series of marks at five inches going down then we'll take our straight edge and I'll line up and I'm basically going to go almost mark to mark. Now, if you've got it pulled in tight and it, you know it's laying nice and flat or if your leather's a little more firm, they may line up just right. But I'm going to look at all those marks and make sure I'm lined up right. And that's just going to keep our overall width consistent going down the side or down the gusset. So there's one, and so I'm just going to cut that out all the way down. There we go. I've got one side length strip that is five inches wide, and that right there will be one of our gussets. So now I'll cut the other one right quick, and that'll give us both of those, and we'll be ready to start fitting and developing those gussets. All right, guys, I got both gussets here. So they're both exactly the same width wise and everything. We'll get all this stuff moved out of the way and then we'll start fitting these gussets. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do now is we're gonna put the zippers inside our gussets. That's gonna be our first step before we size these. Um, and all I've got here is just two 36 inch YKK chap zippers and so you can buy these at weaver leather you can probably get them from aaron at makers leather supply they're just a chap zipper by me by what i mean chap zipper is these are they have a stop on the end that you can line them up um, that's not going to be needed particularly but this i find is the best one to use it's a number 10 they're a little heavier tooth and they'll hold up really well on these bags and so i've got two of them you can do them anywhere 34 inch, you can do 36 inch zipper. Doesn't really matter, I find the 36 works pretty good. And so that's what I normally use uh, because we want that bag to open up enough so that they can get the ropes in and out fairly easily. If your zipper's too short, it makes it a little harder to get those ropes out. And so I wanna have plenty of room, so that's why I use 36. But like I said, a 34 inch will work as well if that's what you've got. So the first thing we'll do is we'll get a gusset over here and what I'm going to do is I'll just fold it in half. Quickest way to find center, right? We'll just fold it in half there and put us a mark. And so that's our center mark. I've got a maul and a big half round punch. So now that we've got it, got it out here, we know where center is from left to right. What I'm gonna do is find center across there. So at two and a half inches, we'll go ahead and put a mark there. And then I'll put my, my center mark on there. All right, so that is the center of our zipper. We've gotta cut a long slot in here for that zipper to fit up inside there. And so since these are 36, I like to measure just to see if maybe we do them 36 and a half, something like that. I want the slot to come around this, this uh, piece there. And so I'll just shut the zipper all the way. Measure that, it's roughly right at 36. So we will cut that 36 inch opening. So 
that would be 18 inches on each side. Put our mark for our 36 inch zipper. And then we're gonna find center of that line as well. That's the end and that's the center. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I've got a punch here and all this is is just a really cheap drive punch, probably Harbor Freight or something. This one is a half inch, looks like. Yeah, it's a half inch hole punch. And all I did was take it on a grinder and grind half of it off. Y'all have seen in other videos where I have a number of those that I've done that way too. And that gives us a uh, half, half round punch. And so what we'll do is we'll just come here on the end. We're gonna line that up to where it's right in the middle of this gusset at the uh, mark that we made for the zipper. Punch one there. We'll come down this side, center it up as well. Punch that hole. All right, so we've got our little slot in here. We just made a little half moon cut there. What I'm gonna do to ensure that this stays uniform all the way down for 36 inches to the other side where we're gonna cut the zipper slot, I'm gonna go ahead and measure in from the side to where that corner of the cut is. And that's two and three, two and a quarter. Sorry, no, that was two and three. It's two and a quarter. And so what we'll do is we'll go all the way down the line here and I'm just gonna make a mark at two and a quarter all the way down till I get to the other side. And which should be, if we're centered, should be roughly the same on this side. So, but what I'm gonna do is now, we know that that punch is a half inch. So we can just put a mark from our other marks here at a half inch. And that's gonna ensure that we cut that straight. And we'll run our line with our straight edge to get that straight. So now we can take our straight edge and we'll line up our marks same way we did when we cut this out. And you can kind of just go from the corner of your cut to the other cut with that bag punch or that end punch there and just kind of see how well your marks line up. If they're pretty close, you can kind of just trace that line. Come all the way down. Now we'll put this one on there. And they line up pretty good too. So we'll mark that. And so as you can see, we're gonna cut this out. Like I said, we've already done the ends right there. And so now we'll just take a razor blade and we'll cut that out. If you wanna use your straight edge as a guide for this, for cutting these out, you certainly can. I tend to find it easier for me just to watch my line, but you do whatever makes this cut more accurate for you. And there we go. Now we have a slot and this, it doesn't really matter which direction you put the zipper in. Um, you'll want to pay attention to that when we go to install the gussets, obviously in our, but as far as right now, you can put the zipper in however you want to, but that's about how that zipper will fit. So we can kind of dry fit it real quick. Just kind of ensure that it fits in there nicely. We don't have any gaps on the ends and you can see how well that fits in there. So what we'll do now is we will just put some double-sided tape on our zipper like we usually do. And I like to keep, it, keep that tape kind of along the outer edge of the zipper tape just so that that doesn't come on the inside here where you can see it. Be sure that's stuck down really good. And then we will pull our tape off. There we go. Now I find it easier to work on the, the closed end first. And what I want to do is just try to set this down initially. This isn't like a contact cement situation where that tape is just going to stick and you can't get it off. So we can just kind of set it down and we can readjust as we need to. 
but I'll start walking it down this way, keeping that this is a very long slot in this leather, and so it wants to, you can really change the shape of it if you're not careful. So I try to just keep it equidistant from the zipper teeth all the way down. And that way that slot is open the exact same amount. And we're not getting it wider in some spots and narrower in others. All right, so we got the zipper in, and so it's glued or you know taped in place really nicely. It's not going to move on us, and so now we will get the sewing machine ready, and we'll go ahead and sew the zipper in place. I go ahead and sew these on the Cobra Class Four instead of the Singer machine because it's a little bit uh, thicker of a stitch. It's going to hold the zipper in much better and a little heavier thread, and so that's what we're going to do. So we'll get the machine ready, and we'll sew that in. All right, so we've got our gusset and we've got our zipper put in there. I went ahead and made center marks along the edge of our gusset here on this first one. Just grab one of them. Remember, these things are cut oversized, so they're longer than what we need. We're gonna go ahead and fit the gusset to one of the panels, but you wanna get a center mark here at the top of your zipper, one on each side, and that way we know where to line this up, and that'll keep your zipper straight from left to right um, on there. Also on your, I'm gonna go ahead and fit the front panel um, you want to kind of check your three panels and make sure they're about the same size. This one's pretty heavily tooled, and so we got a little bit of stretch out of it. You can either fit your gusset panel to your divider or your back panel or your front panel. It really doesn't matter that much. You just want to be sure that your, your uh, front panel hasn't stretched out after tooling too much bigger than the rest of the, or the other two panels. I'm gonna go ahead and use this one to fit because I think a little bit, if it's a little bit oversized on the gusset, we can gain that uh, extra slack out when we go to putting the gusset in on the other ones. But we're, so we're gonna use this one for our fitting panel. One thing that we've done is on the pattern, you'll see we've got a center mark at the top and a center mark at the bottom. When you transfer that to, when you cut this out, you wanna be sure and put a center mark on top and bottom and that way we know where to line everything up when we put gussets in and so i've already done that i've got a little mark right there and i transfer that mark over the top and onto the back so you can see there i've got a little pencil mark there as well as one on the bottom i've got a little mark there as well that's just telling me where the center of this circle is so that we keep the panels square okay all right, I just wanted to pop in here real quick and make a comment about your center marks. I do have marks in the pattern pack on where the center is on that image on the paper, but don't trust those because I'm not the best digitally when I'm creating these patterns and I'm not real confident that that's exactly dead center. So the quickest and easiest way to find that is when you cut your, your cut pattern out of poster board, which is what I use or brown paper, whatever you're gonna use, when you initially cut it out, it's 21 inch circle, and then you do 19 inches and then flatten the bottom here. That's basically all you're doing. But when you cut your poster board out, fold that in half and line it up and crease that, and then take you a pair of scissors and then make you little, little nicks right there where it's, it's right dead center, and that'll make these little, little cut marks right there in your pattern. Then when you trace these out on your skirting leather, whatever you're gonna to do to cut the bodies out, then you can take your pencil when you're tracing this off and you can put your center mark right there. Same on the top and you can do it up there as well. But that's going to ensure that you are dead center of your panel. Like I said, I've got marks on the pattern, but I wouldn't trust that. I would definitely, since you cut, cut out your paper pattern, fold it in half, make sure it's all perfect and crease it down and then just do you a couple little nicks right there that'll give you your true center and that way you're not trusting the pattern because just things can change from my bench and into that computer and i want to be sure that that's dead center the other thing is once you put your gussets in like we're going to mention here in just a second when you see us put them in um always be sure that your gusset your your zippers are level okay just make sure they're level and again as you'll hear me say don't pull and stretch that gusset material different materials are gonna act differently. So that's why I wanna ensure that you've got good marks for those center center for that center line. That will also help you when you're laying out, if you're doing another floral pattern that you wanna do, if you're gonna lay out a brand or a name or an image, that's gonna give you the exact center mark there. 
But again, just wanted to make a quick mention about that so that you, you uh, get some good, good center marks on your pattern when you cut this out. Then you'll always have your center line on there. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put glue all the way around the edge here. I only wanna put glue about yay far on this gusset. You want enough so that it's glued down. You've got room for your machine to pass. But what we're gonna do here is just one little coat. That should be plenty. We'll do another coat on the gusset on one side of the uh, gusset there. I don't do any skiving on these. I'll leave them full thickness. But I'm gonna put a uh, strip of glue going all, all along the edge on one side. And then we're gonna glue this up on here and that's gonna help us to mark where our overlap's gonna be, where they come together on the bottom. And that'll give us our true dimension on how long this gusset needs to be for this bag that we're making. So we'll go ahead and get this glued up and then we'll start fitting this gusset. Okay, so our glue is tacky. We don't need, we're not gonna glue this on permanently just yet. All we're gonna do is fit it. So it's not that critical as long as it'll hold in place while we get a circumference here. We've got our center mark at the top. You always wanna start putting these gussets in at the top. I've got a center mark on my gusset. I'm gonna line that up. I wanna have a little bit of overhang on the gusset. So I've got a little bit to trim with an edger and we'll just work our way all the way around and just take our time. Try not to stretch it too much. You just wanna kinda of put it, put the gusset in and let it fall where it may, but keep it nice and uh, even all along the edge. So you can see there, I've got just a little bit of a overhang. That'll just make it a little easier to edge with an edger once it is installed for the final time after we sew it. Just wanna keep it as even as possible. And if you'll choose your chap leather based on its temper, but also its uh, ability to glue, some old tans are very oily and they're very hard to glue. And this will make installing your gussets a little more difficult because you'll probably have to use clamps or something to hold them in place because the glue will not hold that leather where it needs to be while you're trying to sew this. So I always try to pick a leather that glues pretty well and we'll bring this all the way over here until we get to the center mark on the bottom. And so now we'll come around here and work on the top side. Okay, so we've got it all the way around. You can kind of look at it and see that your zippers should be pretty well level on the sides here, the ends of them. And so now we'll come in here and we've got our center mark right there. So what I'm gonna do is kind of pull this one side and I'm gonna make another center mark on my gusset where this center mark on the actual piece is. And then we'll do the same on this one. So those, that is the exact center of this gusset. And so now I'll just pull the gusset back off. Again, you want to be sure that you're not stretching this all out of whack. Just kind of pull it off, set that off to the side. So now on our, this is our bottom. We have a center mark there and a center mark there. Those are the exact true centers of this deal and so basically these have to line up right on top of each other so they need to meet but we want an overlap so that we can sew a, a box in there and that way they've got some good overlap the bottom's going to be nice and sturdy so what i'm going to do is i usually do i usually do about three inches four inches something like that we'll go ahead and do four on this one and so you'll need two inches on this side and then two on this side, that's gonna be our overlap. So on this top piece here, that's our end, we're gonna cut that at that two inch mark. And then on the bottom one, we'll mark it exactly the same. Maybe two inches, and then another couple inches. 
And so that right there, we'll cut this one off here and this one out here, and then we can line up those marks. So I'll show you that. So I'll go ahead and get a square. I'm gonna to try to make this as square as possible. Be sure you're cutting the right line. It's real easy to make a mistake and cut the wrong one. So just try to, try to be mindful of which one you're cutting. So you can see we're not wasting a ton. So we've got that one cut, and now we'll cut this one. So now, remember these are our center marks here. These are our lineup marks, these ones on the inside. So that will go right there, and those center lines should be lined up on top of each other. And we will sew this in a square here, and that'll make our gusset one solid piece but before we sew that we're going to skive obviously this end down as well as this end down so we don't have any bumps in our gusset when we go to install them you will also want to go ahead and skive from that inside that lineup mark we're going to want to skive the edge the outer edge about a half inch in or so so that when these are double thickness they will still turn nicely on the inside of the bag when we install the gusset and they'll make that turn and you can sew that and it won't be super thick right there. So we'll go ahead and mark, I'm gonna mark on the top here. That's a four inch, should be around four inches right there. And that'll be our lineup. I will go ahead and draw me a line on there. That way I know that's lining up. And so, and you can do it either way. I mean, what other direction you want to do, I just recommend doing both the gussets the same direction so they look professional. But then we'll go ahead and line that up there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is measure on the inside so I know where to skive. Four inch mark and a four inch mark. Here as well. And then here. That's just gonna tell me that I'm gonna skive out here about that far in. So about a half inch or so in on each side and then all the way out here. So you will skive all of that basically from those marks all the way around here. Same on this side, we put them together. The goal there is to get a nice equal seam there to where you don't have a big lump um, in your material. So that's all you're trying to do right there. And it may take a few to get the hang of it, but. Um, but that's basically what we're going to do. So we're going to go over there and I'm going to skive that up real quick just with my hand skiver. If you've got a, a bell skiver, you can do that really very easily, but we're just going to do it by hand. Okay, so I skived these down as you just saw. Um, one thing I did was I mentioned earlier just skive around the edge. This leather here is about a four to six ounce, so it's a little heavy. So I got to looking at it and I think skiving it down a little further back and just a long, even taper down to nothing. You want these inside edges right here um, to a feathered edge. But this edge here, you wanna leave some thickness there because basically what we're trying to mimic is when these are overlapped, that this here where they're overlapped is the same thickness as the rest of the gusset and that'll kind of just make that a lot more even um, in there. Like I said, that's kind of a feel thing. You kind of have to play with it and figure out exactly how much to take off, but I think that's about right. And so what we'll do is go ahead and do it that way, and then we will line these up. Now one trick, whichever one's gonna be on top, whichever one you decide is gonna be on top, anytime you skive chap leather, or even veg tan sometimes, you get some of these fuzzies. I don't know if you can see it real good in the video, but there's some little fuzzies there off the edge. Um, if you're using a bell skiver, I would imagine that's not quite as um, prominent. But one kind of bootmaker trick is just take you a lighter and just burn along that edge with a lighter, and that will burn those little fuzzies off and make that edge look really, really clean. And so you can do that. Uh, just don't stay there very long with that lighter. You want to kind of keep moving because you can burn that edge down and it kind of get kind of wonky. So just kind of one little trick there. If you're ever skiving anything like that and you need a nice clean edge to glue down to without those fuzzies, 
just take a lighter and burn that those fuzzies off. Um, but now we'll go ahead and we're going to line this up is now we'll just overlap and it really doesn't matter. You can do the first one however you want, this way or this way, whichever way you decide. But then when you do the second gusset, just be sure your zipper pull is on the same side as your overlap or whatever so that they're the same when you install them. As long as your zippers are facing the same way, your overlap will be facing the same way as well. Not that critical. It's just kind of a, a nice feature to be sure that that's, that's done nicely so it looks professional. But we'll go ahead and we're gonna put glue here and then we'll put glue on here, let that set up, and then we'll glue these together. And then we are gonna sew these on the machine. We'll sew a strip down here and a strip here. That's just gonna ensure that. And then when we come around and sew the gusset, we'll get the tops. But that those two strips right there, I'll just make sure this doesn't ever flip up on us um, during its use. Okay, I almost forgot, but one, before you glue this, the first gusset we've already trimmed and cut and fit and everything, before you glue that together, lay it out as flat as you possibly can. Lay out your second gusset here. This will save you time from having to glue it up. You certainly can. If you feel more comfortable, you can glue it up and do it the same way. But you should technically have the exact same measurement because these two gussets are gonna be the same. All the panels are pretty much the same. But what you wanna do is line these up, line up your center lines that you made you know, on the gusset there, line up those center marks. That'll ensure that the zippers are, are straight and square. And then you can come down to the end and mark, make your marks on your end pieces. So now we've got our center line, you know, they're, they're square, the zippers are square. The both gussets are nice and flat. We can now come in here and mark the end here. And then we can go ahead and mark the end on the other side. One thing that you may want to do is go ahead and pull a tape four inches right there because that's what our, what our overlap was. So you can pull tape there to four inches, put you a mark there, that's gonna be your overlap line. This line will cut obviously so that it's the same length here. And then we'll go down on the other end and make those same marks. And I've got the other side marked and so now I'll just get my square and we will just make a square cut here on this end to cut it to the right length. And we'll just cut that off, do the same on the other end. Then we can sky this gusset and just like we did this one and go ahead and glue it up, put both of them together. You'll have two completed gussets ready to install on the bag. All right, so our glue now is ready to go ahead and glue up on this gusset. You wanna make sure you don't have any twist in it. Sometimes you can get them flipped around, just make sure they're facing the right direction. And so we will go ahead, turn this to where you can see and we will line up this gusset right on our lineup line make sure it's square and we will glue that down so now if we look down that gusset it's almost i mean i did it by hand so it's not gonna be perfect nothing's ever perfect but it's pretty close to the same thickness all the way across. And that's kind of what we want. We don't want a big lump right here in the middle. And so we've got that ready to go. And what I like to do is go ahead and put me a mark on the other side over here, but try to envision that mark about right there when you get on this side. And that way we're, when we sew from the top, we're gonna be catching this overlap flap here. Cause I don't want it flipping up inside the bag either over use. And so we'll put a little mark right there and then on the top, we'll have our mark here close to the edge. And so now we can take our square once again. And we can use that to draw us a stitch line to follow while we're on the sewing machine. There. And then another one at our mark we just made. And those are the two lines that we'll sew. Now we're gonna start sewing, say about right there, which would be about a half inch from the edge, right there, dead on, half inch. And so you wanna come in about a half inch because we're going to sew 
we don't want to sew past that because we're going to sew our gusset in right along this area and i want to be able to trim that without catching any little stitches or anything and so we don't want to we don't want to have our stitches going too far out so now we'll sew that up on the machine and just two lines one there one there and that gusset will be ready to install into our bag. Alright, so there's our, our stitch. That's exactly what it should look like right there. Cut these stitches right quick. All right, and we have one gusset completed and ready to install. Should be the exact right length that we need for this rope bag. And so we'll set that one off to the side. I'll get the other one skived and the other one put together. And then we'll be ready to install the gussets for the final time. All right, so I had a little idea here, uh, something I'm surprised I've never done on any other rope bag, but I decided to go ahead, a good friend of mine made a suggestion of adding a just some little pocket on the inside of the bag on the divider panel, just to hold roping gloves, uh, rubber bands for your horse's mane, um, you know, maybe a little bottle of powder, whatever, just some little knickknacks, keep stuff in the bag till they don't end up down in the bottom of the bag with the ropes. And I thought that is something very, very simple. So we created a little uh, pocket right here that we're just gonna sew on out of the same material that we did the gussets with. It'll sew on right here in the middle of the bag. We're gonna put a line 24 snap, the bigger 24, uh, the bigger line snaps, we're gonna use a 24. We're gonna put one there and one in the actual panel. And that way when this pocket is in here, you can snap it shut and that pocket will lay nice and flat um, and be out of the way. It'll be in the middle of the panel, so the ropes will be around here. It shouldn't get in the way or anything. And it'll keep your gloves and things easily accessible so that you can find them without having to dig around the bottom of your bag. So you can just mount it right in the middle. Uh, the pocket is eight inches tall uh, total, and then it's gonna finish out to five inches wide, five and a half inches wide, I'm sorry. Uh, so you can see this line here and this line, that's five and a half inches, you'll square this pocket up. But what we did was you wing it, you, the, the bottoms, the, the width we need, but then the top, we wing that out an inch on each side. What that allows to happen is, it's kind of a neat little trick if you ever wanna do a nice little flat pocket, is you can get get it glued up, get get your glue where the pocket's gonna go squared up, right? And then glue this, and then when you put it in, you'll see me here in just a second, you'll pull those wings up and line those up and get those square. That pooches out the top of the pocket, and that way you've got more room in there. It's not just a sewn down flat pocket, which doesn't give you much room. You've gotta wait for that leather to stretch out. This right here is just kind of a, a really low tech way to make a pocket with some room. I do this type of pocket on a lot of my leggings that we used to make. We would do a, uh, a, a pocket on the, on, the, on the shaft and that we would do a pocket like this because it'll lay nice and flat. If it's empty, it'll be out of the way but it's still got room to put uh, some stuff in there. And so that's what we're gonna do there. I'm gonna get this glued up. I did on this one, you can change this shape all you want or whatever. I just wanna be sure the top was snapped down. And since this is just a, a single ply thickness piece of shaft leather, I didn't want to have the snap pull through over time. So I just cut out a nice little circle, sewed it in place so it's double thickness there to uh, give that a little bit more stability with that snap. So we'll go ahead and install this right quick. I'm gonna install my snaps first. That's 13, 15 ounce leather's fairly thick. So you might have to, you might have to skive down on the back side of this piece of leather to get it to where it's, uh, where you can set the snap. But a lot of times you can go ahead and force it and it'll, it'll squish down and, and work. We're gonna give it a shot. If it doesn't work, we'll have to skive that down a little bit in there. that got it right there so like i said sometimes they sometimes these snaps look like they're not going to fit like they're too short like the post on them is too short to uh, fit the through the thickness of the leather but if you've got just a little bit sticking up 
if you're especially if you're using one of those Barry King setters, that's who I got this setter from is Barry King. A lot of people have asked. Aaron Heiser sells them at Maker's Leather Supply, um, and of course Barry sells them as well. But if you've got one of those, you can really push this down with that setter. And when you set it, it'll compress everything and it'll make it fit. But um, you can see we just got a little snap right there. And now that pocket, when we install it, it'll lay nice and flat if there's nothing in it. Even if there is something in it, it will, uh, it'll kind of pull it down and lay nice and flat. So on the center divider piece, I've already, I gave it just the same amount of oil I gave the front and back panel. And so, and I've sealed it with some tan coat just because I um, don't necessarily have to do that. But since I did, I'm gonna go ahead and just scratch real lightly, just right here on the inside. And so we'll just do that. And then I'll apply a little glue to both pieces and we'll glue this pocket in and then we'll just sew it, sew it in place. All right, so our glue's nice and tacky, so now we'll go ahead and mount this. And I'm gonna start at the bottom. I've got a little center mark right there and a center mark inside and some little tracing of where this pocket actually lives. And so we'll glue the bottom down solid. And then what you wanna do is start kind of pulling it in till you get to your squared up lines there on the side and go all the way up. Just do one side. Make that pocket square. And now we can come here on this side and do the same. You kind of pull pull up on the pocket there in the middle. Pull that all around and line it up. This is a very super easy little pocket. Perfect for leggings. Um, you could do this on the outside of a briefcase or a little, you know, just a little laptop bag or something like that it's not the most complicated not the most attractive pocket but i think it works out really well and it's super simple to just add a little spot where you can store some stuff these work great on the inside of a briefcase as well on the divider panel too although it's kind of surprising i've never added one of these to a rope bag before but you can see how open that makes that pocket and then when we want to close it it'll snap shut and now that pocket has a lot of room. That leather has a lot of room to go ahead and stretch out. You can fit three or four roping gloves in there, a little bag of, of uh, rubber bands, anything you might need, just a little spot to kind of store some stuff so it doesn't get lost. So now we'll sew that up on the machine right quick. I'm just gonna sew around the edge and it's, it's ready to roll. There we can fit, like I said, you can fit quite a bit of stuff in there. It's a pretty good size when it's nice and flat. That pocket there won't be in the way of any ropes, pulling, pulling ropes in or pulling them out. Should keep that top tucked up against the panel. Um, shouldn't have any trouble. And you'll be able to find all your stuff. So now, that was just a little sidetrack. Uh, little deal I wanted to add real quick to that center panel before I forgot. And so now front panel's done, center panel's done, our gussets are done, we're ready to install. So now we will go ahead and get these uh, gussets installed. We are going to install them onto the center panel first, and then we'll add our front and our back panel on and go from there and um, finish putting the bag back together. And then all we'll have to do left is straps. What we're gonna do is we're gonna mount our gussets, both of them to the center divider. Um, that's the easiest way that I found to keep these, all three of these panels straight, is to go ahead and do the middle one first get both of both of the gussets mounted on one on the front we'll mount one on the back side and then all we'll have to do is put the front panel on sew it up put the back panel on the bag will be together um, i've gone around here and i have scratched the edge of this again because i've done i've already put bag coat on here or tan coat and so i just lightly scratch just where i'm going to glue that gusset in and then i've got my gusset here's where you need to think about how you want your zipper to open and close if you build any kind of bags, that's always a concern. Which way does it need to go, this way or this way? Um, <clears throat> what I usually do is, if you imagine, you know, we've put this pocket on here on the front. 
this is gonna be the front of the bag. So the front panel will come here and then the back panel will go on behind it. So this will be the front of the bag. I'm right-handed, so I would carry this bag on my right shoulder, so this would be facing out. So when, for me, just me personally, when the bag is closed, I would just assume have the zipper pull on the back side of the bag when it's closed. I think that's just more appealing looking to me, is to have the zipper pull facing behind me as it's being carried on my right shoulder. So that's the way I'm gonna mount this gusset here. You wanna be sure, it doesn't matter, I don't think which direction you make the zipper go. It really depends on the user of the bag. But whichever way you go, just remember to have, when you put the other gusset on, to make sure you've got it on the right side to where they're both the same. Uh, you don't want them separate, you know, one going one way, one going the other, unless I guess the customer requests that. But I would probably just do them both the same direction. So whatever direction you decide, make them go both both the uh, same direction. So I'm gonna put it on like this, zipper pull on this side. And so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and put glue on our center panel. And then I'll put glue on this edge here that will glue on to the front or the middle panel. I will put glue all along the inside and it just so happens it was already on the side that we need it when we first fit the gusset. So we'll go ahead and put that on there. We'll let those dry. We'll mount this gusset. So we'll go ahead and get glue on there. So now I've got my glue on my panel. It's just gonna sit over there and dry a little bit and I'll kind of turn this gusset out a little bit and that way we can get it uh, get it all set up here how we want to do it. We're gonna put it on this side. Just make sure you're, make sure you got it in your mind right because it's real easy to get these put on backwards. So just take your time. Um, and I might do two coats. I'm gonna see how this glue feels when it's done. If your glue feels like it's not super tacky go ahead and um, put on a second coat. You don't want your gussets sliding around and squirming around while you're trying to sew them on a machine. This is gonna get bigger, heavier, and harder to sew each panel you add to this. And especially while I'm doing the middle one first because it's gonna be the lightest it's gonna be to hold it while you're sewing it. And it's also gonna be the most difficult because you're gonna have two gussets um, glued to one, one panel. And so we wanna be sure that they're glued really good so they don't try to squirm around while we're sewing and uh, kind of get off there, or bounce out of the gusset. So we wanna be sure that we get some good glue. If you're using a good contact cement, one good coat might be enough, um, but you can kind of be the judge of that. All right, so I did go ahead and put two coats on just to be safe. So I got two, two thin coats. You don't wanna do real thick coats on anything that you glue together because you can get a glue line there in your edge. So the one thing you wanna be sure is that on your gusset that you've got those original marks. If you can't see them real well, go in there and kind of freshen them up so that you can find those center marks that, were, that we had made originally. You wanna have those on there and you also wanna have them on the bottom. Make sure you can see those where those center line marks are on your gusset. Um, and then we'll move that over to the side. You wanna do the same thing on the panel you're about to glue. I like to put on the center panel, especially be sure I can see that line on the edge there. We're gonna dye these edges so we're not too worried about, um, about making it prominent where we can see it. Just wanna be sure that you can see where that center line is. Now we're gonna start gluing this gusset up Again, you've already put glue on the correct side, but just make sure your zipper's where you want it, you know, where you want it to be. And we're gonna start center mark on the gusset to center mark on our panel. And we're gonna line those up and just start right here at the top. And you're gonna overlap just a little bit, and just a hair, just so you got a little bit there where you can grab it with an edger when we get it all sewn up. We'll go along there with an edger and edge all this excess off. And it's not much, guys, it's just a little, just a little bit of overhang right there. And that way we can get a nice clean edge right there with it with an edging tool. And so we'll make sure that center line is lined up. And we will start going around. Remember, you don't want to 
pull this too much as far as stretching it, especially if your material is real stretchy. You don't want to really pull as you go around. Um, you want to keep it as comfortable, you know, and, and not stretched as possible. And just start going around there. I'll go a little ways down on the top. And then I'll go ahead and move over here to the other side. And we're going to kind of just work around the bag. Come back over to this side and pick up again. Alright, so we've got that side started. I'm going to kind of stop right there. Got that side all the way over there and this side about to right there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come around here and we're going to put this on the bottom. You're going to line up your center mark with your center mark on your main body piece. Overlap just a little bit, just like we did on the top. Now begin to work that around. But one thing we've got to remember is that we pattern this gusset off of the tooled panel. It is a little bit bigger now, by a little bit, not much, but it, 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 the circumference is different than this middle panel, which hasn't been tooled at all. The tooling stretched that panel out just a little bit, but I wanna have enough gusset to go around these so it doesn't pull the tops in or the bottom in if the gusset's too short. So on this one, we've gotta be sure that we can gain a little bit of distance over a longer distance because this gusset is actually a hair too big for this center panel since this one wasn't tooled at all, if that makes any sense. All I'm saying is there is a difference and what you wanna to try to do is get the top done just a little ways about to here, start on the bottom, start working your way around, but don't pull this gusset at all and work your way slowly so that if we have any gather or any extra, we want to try to get that out over a longer distance. We don't want to stretch and pull this gusset towards the bottom because we're going to end up creating a bunch of excess leather. We've got to try to cram in the bottom of it and you can get some wrinkles. And so what we want to do is just very gently lay that down as we go around here and that way any gather or any excess gusset will kind of naturally put itself away and we'll get a nice clean corner there without any kind of gathering or bunching you'll get some bunching if you if you have too much in your length of gusset i know that sounds sounds probably a little complicated you don't know what the heck i'm talking about but um, once you do a couple of these you'll understand what i'm saying but like I said, I would rather I would rather fit that gusset to the tooled panel so that I know when I go to put it on, it's going to fit that panel. Because if we do it off the shortest panel or the you know the one that's not tooled that we know is true and didn't stretch at all, um, we can end up causing some issues when we go to putting the gusset on the tooled front because it's going to be a little bit too small and that's a lot harder to work with than one that's a little bit too long so get that in there that's going to make a nice little corner there push some of that towards the middle and this chap leather is pretty pretty good um, some chap leathers are better than others when it comes to making your gusset material. So you'll also figure out too, when you're buying that, which one you want to get for that purpose. All right. Now that side is glued on and we can see now that's going to go once we put this because this top panel now will get glued there not right now but at the end this will be one of the we'll put that on there on the front but before we get to that one we're going to go ahead and glue our second gusset in on the back side of this and then we'll have both gussets on and then we can begin sewing this one up and it's going to be the hardest like i said that's going to be the hardest step getting both of these gussets on the center panel 
then it's just putting on the front two and making sure you got them square on there. So we'll go ahead and glue this up. I'll glue my second gusset up and we'll put it on same way. Okay, so we've got our glue around here, just like we did on the front. This is the back. So I want to be sure and check. This is the inside here um, that doesn't have the zipper pull. So we'll, we went ahead and checked that and made sure that we've got the zipper pulls when the closed position are facing the right direction. So we've got that. Same thing we did on the front, find our center line for the top. We'll start there, line those up. If you made these gussets exactly the same, this should all line up. And then we'll come around here. Like I said, don't pull any slack out. We just wanna set it down so we don't gain any length on our gusset. Come down to about right there. Over here, go the other direction. Right, we'll spin around. We're going to come into the bottom. We've got our center line on our bottom piece. Center line on the bottom. Line those up. Now here you can do one thing just to check and make sure. Just to look at your overlap. One, they should be facing the same direction. Here and here, it overlaps there and overlaps there, and they sh those stitch lines should be about the, about uh, straight across from each other. And so those are pretty close. And now we'll just begin like we did earlier. We just kind of like not pulling the gusset, just setting it down all around. And don't pull any slack out of it. And even skip ahead a little bit and then work your way past that here and here what we're trying to do is just prevent any kind of little wrinkles you know guess you don't want any bunching any wrinkles in there Sure our zippers are pretty well level there and there should be on the sides too as you look at them they should be about the same both sides about the same cross all right so we're ready to go if you have you want to sew the gussets in on this center panel you got both gussets glued on really good they're not going to shift around you want to sew these on from the front side obviously because this is going to be the front of the bag the front panel will go on top here so you want to sew from this side um, and what you want to do is just go along if you had any spots where your gusset material overhung the main body piece here or the main center divider you can take a razor blade and trim that off the only reason you're going to do that is just don't trim too much of it off just trim a little bit off so that you can set your wing dividers along the panel not your your uh, chap leather but the actual middle panel and you can go around here and make you a stitch line if you want to use a gauge on your machine or a guide you could definitely do that but again be sure you don't have too much excess um, uh, material from the gussets hanging off of that because that'll throw off your line so we want to base that line off of the main center piece but now we'll go over to the cobra class 4 and i'm going to sew that or sew this on we're going to sew through all three layers of leather right there at one time and the center guts basically of the bag will be completely assembled and ready to go All right, so we've gotten it sewn up. I had to figure out which edger I was using last time I did one of these. 
But what I like to do is go in here, take a nice heavy edger. It'll be kind of difficult to get on the camera, but what we want to do is go along there and edge the excess of that chap leather off. All the way around. We're going to do both sides. And once we get this done, just be real careful. You don't want to, you don't want to butcher it. But if you get you a nice sharp, and I'm using just a common edger on this, I find this works a little better than a round edger as far as getting on there and getting that excess chap leather off there. Take your time. Now, if you don't feel comfortable doing this, you can certainly wait to do your edges, sand all of this, and then trim, you know, sew it up and trim it with a razor blade and then sand everything down and then do your edge. I find it's just a lot easier, like I said earlier, to get a good edge on my panels here and then just sew the chap leather on and then trim it off nice and flush. And then we'll come in here with probably some tokenol and I'll, I'll uh, slick that up real nice and then we'll hit all of that with a edge coat or an edge die. And that's just gonna kind of clean that up. Now when you get here to your, your overlap, if it's real thick and hanging over a bunch and your edger won't catch it, you can certainly trim it with a razor blade. There's always more than one way to do something, but that's, this is just what's always worked best for me, just keeping it straight and getting a nice good bevel on that see that there oh, and now we'll flip it onto this side and do the same thing here okay so we've got our gussets sewn onto our middle panel and I went ahead and I put tokenol. Um, this stuff right here, this tokenol, most of y'all know what this is, uh, this edge dressing. It works really, really well on any type of chef leather or chrome tan leather. And so I went ahead and used that just to slick up where I trimmed that. We'll hit that with some dye here in a little while when the bag is completed. So basically the guts are completely finished. Uh, gussets are sewn on They're well, the way we need them. And now we'll go ahead and sew on our front and back panels. I'm going to start with the back panel first. Um, this is where lining them up becomes really important. And if you remember earlier in the video, we made our center marks on the top and the bottom. And that way we know where their center marks are. And then we have the center marks on our panels as well. And so we'll draw those lines so that uh, mark them, be sure you can see where they're marked because when we go to line this up, we're gonna start in the center, just like we did when we were putting them on the center panel and we'll line those up and then work on the bottom and then bring those together. That'll ensure that the panels are straight with each other. I advise gluing these up and then standing it up and making sure that you don't have one panel askew of the other panel and that way they're kind of in line. And so we'll go ahead and get this one glued up and we'll just put a strip of glue around the edge just like we did putting these uh, gussets on the center panel and glue in here and then we'll be ready to install that. Okay, our glue is nice and tacky. You wanna be sure that you're putting the right panel on the right side. Um, like I said, I put that pocket here, that's the front. And so that front panel over there will go on the front, but we're gonna do the back panel first. Our glue is nice and tacky. We've got our marks here. As you can see, I've got a center mark right there and I've taken it all the way over the top right here so that I can see it. And then we've got one on the bottom just in the middle and I've taken it all the way to the back so I can see that. Um, those marks, I did put center marks in the pattern pack so if you get that, it does center that up but basically you just want your, your center line down the middle of whatever your pattern is. And that way we can line these up. 
So I'm gonna start here at the top. There's my center mark right there. It's probably be easier to see this way. And I will line those up. Get that thumb down in place really good so it doesn't move on us. And then we will just begin to go around our edge here. Remember, leave you just a little bit of overhang, not much. Leave it pretty straight, but just a tick, and that way you can you'll have a little bit to edge off. Okay, I'm gonna go a little past our D hangers right here for now, and then we'll come over here to the bottom and we'll line that up. It's in line as we can with our marks. Go ahead and go past the corner just a little bit. Okay. Now we can work on each side. Remember, don't pull this and stretch it out. You just want to lay it in there because we've cut this. And if your leather material for your gussets is very stretchy, you can uh, gain a lot of distance by pulling it too much on when you're when you're installing the gusset and then you will end up with too much slack that you can't you don't have a place to go with it so you can kind of stretch these things out of whack so you want to be sure you're just laying it in there and that way it stays true Okay, so we've got our front panel glued on. The one thing you want to look at is you want to make sure that your bottom line on this particular bag, because it's got a flat bottom, you want to make sure the first and second panel, they're in line. You don't have one, you don't have one skewed. We'll use this panel as an example. You don't have one this way or one this way. They're both flat on the table, and that'll ensure that they're straight as we go along. And um, so if you've got one that's kind of twisted or maybe you got it a little off, then you can take it off since you just glued it. If you did two coats, I did two coats on my gusset, I almost always do. Um, when you pull this front panel off, that glue should still be plenty tacky to be able to uh, still glue this on very well for sewing. And so you can go ahead and just reset it, get everything in line. One trick that I've learned on these, it's not foolproof, but it works pretty well, is especially once you get the other panel on, is you can just set it that way and then set your the one you're gluing on, set it flat also, and then just bring it and line up your gusset on there when you glue it in. Work your way down a little bit past your Ds. Then you gotta lay it down and line the bottom up. That can still be tricky, but I find if you get the top kind of close, it's a little easier to reset if you need to to be sure that your panels are straight in line with each other. So, we've got the front panel glued on. Make sure you've got good contact with your glue all the way around. Everything is glued up real nice, um, especially on these corners right here. This isn't a very hard corner, but you wanna be sure that you've got your material glued down in place really well so that your machine doesn't shift it and push it in and have you miss that, because that's kind of a booger to deal with if that happens. So um, we got that ready, and so now we'll go to the machine and we'll sew this up, and then we'll be ready to glue on our front panel. All right, so we've got our back panel sewn on. So now we'll do our front panel. We'll do it the exact same way as we did. Remember, like I said, you can just set them down. Now that we've got these put together, we can set this down and line up our center marks. And hopefully it'll stay pretty well straight as we glue that together.
kind of look down this way as well and just kind of see if you've got that lined up where you need it. Usually if you line it with your center lines, your center marks, it should end up about right. But sometimes it stretches out a little funny when you tool it or maybe your material and your gusset moves around a little bit differently. So sometimes you might have to change exactly where that gusset sits. That's lined up pretty good. Lined up, they're all pretty straight. They're all sitting on the bench. Of them kind of, you know, they're not changed. They're all the same going across. And so the bag sits nice and flat, nice and sturdy. And now we'll get a good, good compression along here and then we'll sew this one up. All right, so we got our front panel sewn on. I've gone ahead and done a few things here off camera that are just kind of repetitive, but I got it sewn on. I got the edge um, edged off there with an edger. And then I've, I've gone, went ahead and gone in and dyed these edges and we hadn't dyed them yet. And I went ahead and touched up along the outside ones um, where the shep leather was. I went ahead and dyed that as well. And then I put, I like to put some tan coat, just regular five beings tan coat. I like to put that on the gusset depending on what material you decide to use for your gusset um, this brown uh, shap leather here old tan shap it works really well with tan coat gives it a nice luster and also shines up your edges so i've, I've done all that um, and now what we'll do with the bag is basically together the entire bag is is ready to go all we've got to do now is put on our straps i've already made our straps this is basically just very simple you can do the single ply out of 9 10 or 12 ounce leather uh, you know, 10, 12 ounce, somewhere around there if you want to. Uh, these are made out of 9, 10, and then I lined them with 3, 4, and that's just gonna give them a nice um, classy look, a nice finished look. I stitched them and just did the same border that's on the bag. Now you can definitely floral tool these if you'd like or knife cut them, whatever you wanna do. The patterns, if you get the pattern pack, there is a pattern in there that shows you how long to make these straps, and I give you the pattern for our little tapered end here where it's going to um, rivet onto the bag. We will rivet these onto the bag so they don't come off. And then I've got my buckle straps here. We're just gonna use a one inch cart buckle. I get these at Weaver Leather Supply. Um, there's other companies that sell these type of uh, cart buckles, but I really like these on these bags. You can also, if you want, want to, or if the customer requests it, and I've done a lot of bags this way, is to instead of rivet, riveting them onto the bag themselves, you can rivet a snap, like a brass snap, onto the ends of your straps and the end of your buckle. Um, and if you do that, you really don't need the buckle end. You just can do the same thing on this other end here and just put snaps on each end, then you can snap them to the Ds. I prefer this look though, with them actually riveted on the bag. And I like having the buckle um, on each strap. That way you can unbuckle the straps and hang this bag from a fence. A lot of times at uh, roping arenas and different event places you go to to, to rope or team rope um, or to rodeo, they won't really have post. It's more pipe and top rail. And so it's smooth top. So you really don't have a post to hang this bag from. If you have it on the ground, horses that are tied along the fence are gonna step on it. So a lot of guys like to hang these bags up along the fence. Um, or even at your trailer or anything else. And a lot of times there's not a place to really hang those straps. So at least with the buckle, you can undo the strap and hang it around a pipe 
or hanging around your trailer window, whatever you've got, um, you can kind of do that and get it up off the ground so it doesn't get stepped on. But anyway, we're gonna mount these Ds or these uh, buckles onto our hanger straps. And then what, before we do that, we're gonna go ahead and put some holes in these straps so that they're already there. And I just, you can do these however you want. Usually on most of my strap goods, head stalls, um, belts even sometimes, um, there, my holes are just one inch apart 99% uh, of the time. On any kind of strap good strap, like for a, like I said, for like a head stall or something like this or, or whatever, I'm usually gonna come in about five inches from the end and that will be our first hole, or center hole I mean, sorry. And then we'll do two holes one inch apart on each side of that. And that's gonna give us five holes and that's a good um, placing as far as spacing and from the end that's a good way to make sure that you're you know you've got plenty of room and you've got enough tail left when you're in the center hole that's going to go through that cart buckle nicely and it just looks nice so that's kind of what i do if uh as far as the spacing you can do whatever you would like as far as these spacing so i've got from from the tip to five inches that's my center hole and then i just do two on each side of that at one inch apart and so when we put this buckle in here and mount it down, you'll see we've got enough tail hanging out from the other side of that cart buckle. It will pretty well cover the strap, makes it pretty much the same size. It just looks nice. But again, you could do that any, any spacing you would like to do. But so we'll get this other one punched and then we'll go to the um, rivet setting bench and I'll mount the buckles onto these pieces here. Okay, so I just brought everything over here to this big table. We're just gonna put these buckles on. Now, when you make these straps, um, I wanted to mention one thing. When you make these straps, since I made these off, off camera, um, it's just like any other strap. You're making a head stall, you're making any kind of little tack item or anything. Where your buckle is gonna go, that end, you wanna skive that down on the main body piece of so the 910. I skived it down pretty good. It doesn't need to be super, super thin, but it needs to be uh, thin enough that it will make that turn around the buckle and lay nice and flat and you don't get a big, huge bump. Same thing on this end, this tapered end here. You want to take some of that off so that that's thinner, so that whenever we make that bend, again, it'll make it nicely around the Ds. And the same goes for the straps. You want to be sure and do that on the actual straps. Be sure and skive those ends down. And I'm taking, taking about down to about half thickness, so somewhere around six ounce. Um, you know, five, six ounce, somewhere around there um, would be plenty. And, and then when you get your liner on there, it'll be about the right weight. But yeah, skive those ends down just a little bit. That's just part of finesse when you're putting things together. That'll give you a little cleaner look and a more functional item if you'll pay attention to those, uh, those thicknesses around turns and buckles. And I'm just setting these with a number nine copper rivet. You can definitely do something different there if you'd like. Even though this is somewhat of a piece of luggage, and so you think it's gonna be, um, you know, kind of used lightly, we need to remember it is a rope bag, so it will actually be I've seen these things pretty abused. So I like to use copper rivets on these because these bags are gonna get thrown around and lugged around all over the country. So we wanna be sure that everything holds up. All right, so we've got our little buckle straps. They're ready to go. Now we gotta mount all this stuff. All right, so I've got my larger little bench anvil here, uh, just a chunk of aluminum. And what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and mount our straps on. Now remember, one of these buckle straps goes on the front, one goes on the back. Don't put them both on the same side. What I like to do on these bags is I like to put the buckle on the right-hand side because this bag will be carried. This Remember, this is I like to have these zipper pulls face the back side of the bag when you're carrying it, so the front will be facing out. If you're right-handed, it'll be on your right shoulder. The front of the bag faces out. Zipper pulls are to the back. The buckle on the front. That's just kind of how I how I want to do it. Um, you can definitely switch it around. You can do it however. I don't know what way would actually be 
proper, but that's just how I kind of do it. And so we're gonna put this strap here, and the other strap will come around and they'll buckle here towards the front. Um, and so you're gonna need a little taller anvil a lot of times because this bag is very large and the, the these kind of get kind of close to the actual bag. And so you've got just a little bit of clearance there to set that D and set that rivet, but we want to be careful with our with our edge of our bag. And so we just gotta kind of figure out how you're gonna hold it, hold it together. And that right there ought to work for us to set this. up against your bench holding it against the bench like I am like I am right here if now if you're holding it up against the bench just be sure that you don't have anything on your bench that's gonna scratch your bag um, if you can probably get a little sheet or something strap on or the buckle hanger on and so I'm gonna go ahead and shape up that back side just a little bit you always want to kind of watch those burrs on your rivets especially the one that's up against the bag because I would prefer that not scratching the bag um, there's not a whole lot you can do about it, but hopefully that'll that'll be all right. Just kind of pound that down a little bit with a hammer. If you've got a different type of peening tool, you could probably round that off just a little bit more. But now we'll mount the strap. And so both these straps are the same. Just grab one of these. And then the strap will mount to the other side. Like so. got one strap on and then this strap here will go right to this buckle so there's our there's our strap there like I said one whole strap on one side there um, don't cross them over they don't cross over from one side to the other so now all we've got to do is mount the strap on the back side and we'll be we'll be ready to go all right so I'm gonna mount these straps Remember on the front, uh, the front of the bag, I mounted this de this buckle hanger on the right hand side of the, of the face of the front. So when we come to the back side, you're now gonna mount it to the left side, which is on the same side. That way your buckles are on the same side of the bag. Um, I'm not a deal killer, I guess, but for aesthetically, I would prefer them to be on the same side um, of the bag when it's being carried. So just be sure you're looking at that when you put them on, it's real easy to make a mistake and put it on the wrong side. but. So now we'll get these mounted and this bag will be ready to go. All right guys, so that's making our rope bag like you, like you saw in the video. It's pretty similar to the way we made it in the last video that we did on making a rope bag. The only difference is I did a much uh, more simple gusset system in this. Remember the only reason we did, like we mentioned before, um, the other video, the only reason we did it that way is because my side wasn't long enough to get all the way around this thing. You need quite a bit of length on here to be able to get all the way around this uh, rope bag when making the gusset. So I had to do that one in pieces. This one's solid. I've done almost all my, in fact, I've done every rope bag I've done pretty 
pretty much just this way. Um, I did that one in the other video. That was the first time I'd actually done it that way. And it actually worked out really well. It's just a lot more complicated. So I'd recommend doing it this way. Also, when you go to doing the gussets, remember, if you get the pattern pack, I give you all the measurements on there. I can't remember right off the top of my head on how long they were. We talked about it in the video. Um, but I give you all the measurements and where to cut that and where to overlap and how much overlap and all that. Um, but cut that thing a little bit oversized and fit it the way we did in the video. Do not trust those measurements. I don't hardly ever trust gusset measurements. I always fit those gussets to make sure that they fit properly on the project that we're building. Because if you use a different material, thinner or thicker, more stretchy, less stretchy, um, that can change the measurement of that gusset when you're installing it. So I always recommend fitting that to one of your panels. That'll tell you exactly where you need to be. Then you can make both your gussets and install them and you'll have a lot more success when you're putting these gussets in these bags. Um, now also in the pattern pack we've also got the measurements for all of the straps and the buckle hangers and all that. Just remember on that page of that pattern pack there's um, so some of those pieces like the gusset and this strap, those aren't to scale necessarily. You need to cut them the length that I talk about on that page, the, the measurements that I give you. Cut them that measurement and then kind of use those measurements as your reference. Um, the pattern pack for this project does come with this tooling pattern right here minus the, uh, these people's brand um, for the front panel and the tooling pa uh, pattern for the back panel. It's only one pattern on this pack because of the size of it and the time it takes to lay something like this out. We will be doing more patterns. Um, we'll do pattern number two, pattern number three. Later on as we go along here in the near future, we'll start adding more to that. But every pattern will have all the measurements and everything for all the rest of the pieces. And of course, this video will be a great reference for putting one of these together. Um, remember this, this bag right here ended up finishing out to right at about eight and a half inches. If you, if you fill it up, up, it's almost nine inches wide total and so you can run these gussets width wise anywhere from five to six inches wide I would just not get too terribly wide because it makes the bag really cumbersome and really large if you want to make this single compartment you can very easily do that and I would bump just cut you one gusset piece and I would probably do that somewhere around seven maybe somewhere around there um, you can kind of adjust that to your liking but I think if you make rope bags too terribly big um, nobody's going to carry that many ropes to the pin every time and so that makes that bag really kind of wonky and it doesn't really line up or stay stable and so we want to keep those gussets around that you know the whole bag finished out around that eight inches I think is about about right no matter whether it's double or single um, but the bag went together really well like I said you, there's a lot of things you could do differently you could change some stuff up um, you can make it completely round if you don't like the bottom being flat like that. I like that just because I think they, that if you set them down on the ground, they'll stand. If you're making them completely round, they fall over and things. Um, so I found this pattern here to be our kind of go-to when we're making a rope bag. But I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got something out of it. It is a lot of tooling. If uh, if you're wondering, this to, to tool this whole panel takes me about a day. Um, you know, I don't know if that's necessarily eight to ten hours solid, but it takes me, I kill a day tooling one of these. And so you've got a lot of tooling time at the bench on a rope bag if you're gonna do them fully tooled. Um, and they also look great if you're just wanting to make one of these projects. Um, it's a 21 inch circle, 19 inches from the top to the bottom, cut a flat spot on the bottom. That's pretty much my pattern. It's not brain science, it's not that, that complicated, but um, you could do it, just rough out and put somebody's brand in it, make one of these bags, because as you saw in the video, there's not a lot of just super hard construction on this bag it's just big and so you've just got to kind of think about it a little bit and, and and it's not something that 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 needs a a whole lot of uh, complexity or anything like that it's pretty simple and pretty straightforward um, so you could definitely make one of these rough out basket stamp do a corner set you can do whatever you wanted but if you want to fully tool it you're going to be at the tooling bench for quite a while because that's quite a bit of tooling but it's a lot of fun um, and uh, as far as layout this is going to be one of the largest things that uh, that you'll ever lay out a pattern for if you're going to do one fully tooled there's other items that that are kind of near this but i think this is um you know uh, even more than a, than say a saddle fender or even a saddle seat uh, maybe just as much but it's it's all in one spot there's not broken up into 
three different sections. So, but this is a fun project to make. I hope you'll give one a shot. If you're wanting the pattern pack for this, you can get this uh, on our website. There's a link down in the description. It'll take you right to it. Uh, again, this is going to be a large format print, obviously, for the size of this project. So if you're in the U.S., we recommend that you purchase the printed version that we will mail out to you. Be sure you're getting the printed version. We do offer this in the digital as well for our overseas customers. If you do purchase the digital version, you will need to take that somewhere and have it printed because it's going to come on big sheets of paper. Can't really print that out on your own home printer. But I appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you guys in the next project video.